Hey guys, uh, this lesson is on hearing and vision and uh, this is presented by me Kaushik Chari. I am currently pursuing my MBBS from AIMS and uh, you can follow me on an academy using this link. So vision, uh, just a little recap uh, from the previous lesson on parts of eyes in here. The eyes is, eye has three uh, layers, the sclera, the choroid and the retina and the sclera is the outer tough layer, choroid is the inner layer and the retina is the photosensitive layer. And we have two chambers, the aqueous humor, the vitreous humor, the lens, the ciliary body that holds the lens in position and the iris. And we have the transparent cornea over here. So all of this is part of the eye. This is just a recap to the previous lesson. So vision. Retina is the light sensitive cells which are the rods and cones. And rods are responsible for vision in dim light and contain the pigment rhodopsin. And cones are responsible for color and have photopsin. So this is something that you should remember. So how does vision actually occur? is when the light comes through from uh, here uh, the lens uh, refracts the light towards the macula lutea uh, the macula lutea is like i had uh, hinted about this in my previous lesson i'm going to elaborate it over here so i told you that there are two types of cells one is the rods which contain rhodopsin and the other is the cones which contain photopsin so the cones are predominantly concentrated at the macula lutea and the center of the macula lutea is called as the fovea centralis. So the cones are majorly concentrated here, whereas the rods are more on the periphery. So uh, the main function of the refractory apparatus of the eye is to concentrate light on the macula lutea for obvious reasons, because it is the point of best color vision. So the light comes in and it is focused at the macula lutea. So this is how, uh, what is the word function of the refractory apparatus of the eye is. So what all aids in refraction is the lens, the vitreous chamber which is filled with the fluid or jelly like substance known as the vitreous humor and the aqueous humor uh, is what is present in the aqueous chamber. Even the cornea to some extent refracts the light. So let's look at the function, it refracts the light and focuses on the macula. Aqueous humor, it maintains the intraocular tension. So the main function of aqueous humor is to maintain the eye tensed. If you try and palpate your eyes right now, you can feel that the eye is a tense organ. It is not a, a soft organ, despite having two huge spaces, the vitreous chamber and the aqueous chamber. The eye has a good amount of intraocular tension. That is because it maintains fluid within the these two chambers and that what maintains the intraocular tension. The vitreous humor is, as I told you, is for refraction, the retina is the photosensitive layer. So what are the dysfunctions? The dysfunction with the lens, when the lens becomes opaque, you have a condition called as cataract, cataract and, the when, and then when uh, there are a number of focal planes, what do you mean by focal planes is that the number of uh, segment the lens uniformly doesn't have a single focal uh, focal length there are a number of parts of the lens with different focal lengths this is condition is known as astigmatism uh, and aqueous humor causes glaucoma increase in aqueous humor leads to increased intraocular tension and a condition called glaucoma develops and the retina uh, night blindness is a condition that is seen in retinal dysfunction because of vitamin A deficiency there's a lack of a pigment rhodopsin which is used for uh, vision in dim light and that's why it causes night blindness. Uh, so moving on to hearing, hearing is a little more difficult to understand than light because for obvious reasons hearing is, uh, uh, sound is a mechanical wave. So it hits the tympanic membrane, it sets a vibration and these vibrations are amplified by the ossicles. And basically I want to create this concept over here that sound is transmitted in the form of mechanical waves so these mechanical waves are translated into vibrations by the conducting system of the ear and these vibrations are perceived by the cochlea or the organ of corti in the cochlea and these vibrations are picked up and these sensations are transmitted to the brain in the form of impulses which the brain interprets as sound so the concept is that the sound is transmitted uh, the mechanical wave is transformed into vibrations the vibrations are transformed into neural impulses and these neural impulses are interpreted by the brain as sound. That's how hearing basically occurs. So if you look at this, the sound moves 
to into the air from to the external auditory canal it sets the tympanic membrane into vibration this tympanic membrane sets the malleus into vibration then the incus and then the stapes and from our uh, knowledge of anatomy we know that the stapes lies on the oval window and the oval window is connected to the scala vestibuli the scala vestibuli which is the cochlea part of the cochlea and this uh, the vibration is set in, set up even in the cochlea so let's let us discuss up to the cochlea now so the vibration moves from the external auditory canal to the tympanic membrane to the stapes which is sitting in the oval window now moving on to the cochlea so imagine cochlea to be a hollow tube imagine a hollow tube fill it with completely fill it with water and place two membranes on either side so the cochlea is just a hollow tube with a fluid within it and it has two openings one is the round window and the oval window incidentally both the round window and oval window are in the same plane because the cochlea is uh, has two and a half turns so if you can imagine that the oval window and round window are in the same part on the same part same side because the cochlea is a convoluted tube right so it has two openings both of which are on the same side because the cochlea is has two and a half turns so basically cochlea is a hollow tube with two and a half turns two openings the round window and the oval window and the oval window is where the stapes sits stapes sits on the oval window and the oval window is in direct contact with the scala vestibuli so when the oval window when the stapes vibrates vibrations are set up in the perilymph i have to told you this previously the scala vestibuli contains the fluid which is known as perilymph the scala tympani also has the perilymph and the scala media which is between the resinous membrane and the basilar membrane is where you have a fluid called the endolymph so basically the oval window is in communication with the perilymph so if you have understood what i tried to tell you you will realize that the scala vestibuli and scala tympani are actually two uh, the same thing which are in continuation with each other so if this is the scala vestibuli it rotates on its own and forms the scala tympani so we have taken the section of the cochlea like this cochlea is a uh, convoluted two and a half turns so taking the section of the cochlea somewhat like this and now we are looking at it from the front so in the scala vestibuli is what actually becomes the scala tympani later on so both of them are filled with perilymph and between the resinous membrane and the basilar membrane is the membranous labyrinth i talked about this before bony labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth the membranous labyrinth lies between the resinous membrane and the basilar membrane this is the membranous labyrinth which is filled with the endolymph and this is uh, the endolymph uh, is present in the scala media now when the perilymph is set into motion it sets the basilar membrane vibrating this is the organ of corti which has hair cells hair cells hair cells which are the uh, sens uh, sensory cells of the organ of corti and when these vibrate the hair cells the hairs of the hair cells start touching the tectorial membrane so and the the, the cells are stimulated the hair cells start to move the hair touches the tectorial membrane the movement of the hairs generates action potential within these cells which is carried as an impulse remember the lesson on action potential and transmission of impulses the action potential is generated due to the rubbing of the hair to the tectorial membrane within the hair cell this action potential is transmitted as an impulse through this nerve the nerve cochlear nerve or the nerve that carries in these impulses to the brain which is interpreted as sound so that is how the mechanism of hearing occurs now i want you to know two things what are the problems with hearing that can occur the first problem you can imagine is that if there's something blocking the external auditory canal that is something like a wax or a foreign body that is blocking the external auditory canal which will lead to a uh, decreased transmission of sound from here and then if you have something like uh, the problem with the if you have a problem with the uh, tympanic membrane or the middle ear it lead to problems in conduction and if you have a problem with the cochlea it will lead to sensory neural hearing loss so the two types of hearing loss conductive hearing loss because of the problems with the conducting apparatus or sensory neural hearing loss because of problems with the cochlea so uh, that is about the mechanism of hearing and vision and thanks for watching